first, thanks for, for coming, and thanks to Yipon for organizing, thanks to Antonio for uh, having us here. Um, so we have like a couple of things going on tonight. Uh, we'll start with JSA 2.2, what's new in 2.2, and and then we'll uh, do a quick demo on Spring Views, on to generate, how to generate a Webflow uh, JSA prime face application, and then I guess we'll have a break, and then finish with prime faces. So. So any JSF users here, right now? All right. Uh, prime faces users? Wow, <laughs> that's cool. So I guess prime is very popular in France. Um, so JSF 2.2, I guess everyone is using JSF 2 more than 90%. Uh, and if you are using JSF 1, you'll be very unlucky. Uh, so, I have a hard name to pronounce. This is Cha Tai. Like, it's like C and H, like China, Charles. This little thing in Turkish, in Ch. And you need to skip this G, meaning Cha Tai. Yeah, it's complicated. <laughs> so, um, it's very hard to get coffee in Starbucks as well. <laughs> when I'm abroad. So, I'm a JSF expert group member, JSR314, this is JSF2, JSR344 is JSF2.2, and I joined the expert group at late stage of JSF2.0, uh, after my, uh, you know, our, our activities on prime phases, we were invited to expert group by Ed Burns, JSF specifically. I'm the founder and lead developer of prime phases, the Next generation components with. Also, I'm the PMC member of Apache My Faces. I speak in conferences. Last week I was at Java One, for example, and and I review books and things like that. Uh, my full time job is Prime Technology. I'm the co-founder of the Prime Technology, which is the company making Prime Faces. Um, so, outline of uh, JSF 2.0. First, uh, this is like a short, like half an hour talk. Uh, I don't have any demos, sorry for that, because there's no really working jar, things change every night, and some of the features here are not implemented, so nothing to show anyway. Um, so first I will start with what JSF is and what JSF has done since as last 10 years, and then I'll cover the you know, overview of features like big level, big ticket features in JSF2 and then rest. And I will just show you some resources in case you would like to uh, see the progress of JSF and keep track of it. So JSF is, as everyone knows, is the standard web framework. Nowadays, every month we get a new web framework for Java. <laughs> e, um, but this one is special because uh, it's standard. And it's also quite good. And it's, it's been hanging around since like 10 years. Uh, it's component oriented. Um, and event driven, so components are like buttons, but when you click on that button, it's an action event, just like in Swing. So it just borrowed ideas from Swing, uh, from other web frameworks, and created something based on server side uh, user interface. Uh, it's pluggable, so that's how we created prime faces. We can, you can write your own custom components, you can just change it the way you like. And it's the core foundation of extensions, so that, so JSF. What I see JSF is like a core, and people like me or from other companies develop extensions on top of it. And at some point, some of these extensions can be standard, like facelets in 2.0, right? Or Ajax. So this slide is from 2001, uh, from Java 1. You can see it's like a more, you know, Amiga Commodore 64 <laughs> slide. So you get the client, you have the server, you make a request, you get a full page response, uh, response and there are these components when there's HTML. Still it does it. And it's the, the good thing is that uh, JSF is doing this since 2001, and the first JSR implemented came out in 2004. So the question would be, uh, JSF has some things right so that it is around since 2001, right? And what are these things that, as I mentioned, like every month a new framework is coming out, but JSF is still here, 
and not going away and probably will still be us hopefully uh, will be us will st uh, with us for some time as well in the future so this is from last week java 1 2000 so this is from ed burns slides so uh, the, the, the reason is we are still doing web development and these web developments uh, we need to be fast we need to you know create reuse interfaces quite fast and these applications should be localizable, accessible, that you can expect from Wave Framework. Um, secure, device independent, that should render to mobile, render to desktop, and things like that. And good looking. Uh, by default it doesn't look good, but if you add uh, a certain library, it, it, make, it looks better. And fun to use, so that and nobody likes, you know, when we were working with JSF1, there was some quite a lot of pain. Uh, with, you know, there was no templating, JSPs were problems and a lot, lot of things, but uh, community just fixed that problems with facelets and component libraries, and now they are in standard in JSF2, and JSF2.2 is making the same thing. It's just, there is no, actually no innovation at all, just JSF, I mean, if you check JSF2, uh, Ajax is not invented by JSF or templating or resources, JavaScript, they are all uh, innovated elsewhere and integrated in JSF. So this is how JSF survived. Uh, there are some abstractions and pluggable architecture so that uh, these extension writers, framework writers, were, uh, had the ability to hook into JSF, write their own stuff and extend it, like uh, bringing JSF, Ajax to JSF1, right? View vendors, navigation handlers and so on. Uh, JSF evolves, although there is a GCP process which is, can be you know, slow sometimes, it manages to evolve it, and it, in JSF2 uh, adopted Ajax and all the new cool things uh, the web brought us and keeps standardizing them. So the facelets became standard, Ajax became standard, and there's strong community. There's uh, Prime Faces, JBoss is making an investment with Seam, a lot of ideas were in of JSF2 come from C. There is rich faces, other libraries, uh, Spring Webflow, Spring Source has done Spring Webflow. Uh, there are open faces and other libraries like Omni Faces, which is quite popular these days. So JSF is doing the same thing in 2.0. Nothing has changed. And so what JSF 2.0 stand, standardizes and how it evolves. So what's the cool thing these days? HTML5, right? So JSF 2.0 is uh, has worked. The expert group has worked on uh, how to integrate HTML5 features to the JSF. And before that, um, this is how JSF is evolving. For example, in the past, all the UI state was on the server. Still, uh, their components are on the server, but the components, for example, all the prime face components render JavaScript and things like that which can communicate with the server and, for example, um, talk with a you know, web service, talk, communicate with JSON and things like that. So JSF is like coming to between. I mean, uh, where JSF stands, I mean, you can write your jQuery you know, uh, project with no server-side technology at all, just bind it to Jersey web service and talk with JSON. And what JSF adds, you get validation, Ajax, rapid development. So JSF is, as the time progresses, JSF is, you know, the, the slider is from, it was just on the right side, and now it's going to the left side and keep trying to find the best of both worlds. So, um, life of JSF, um, we had the first release in 2004. This is JSF 1 and 1.1. This is JSF 1.2. And this is, you can see that there's a you know, difference between 2006 and 2009. It took like three years to come up with JSF2. And now it is like probably three, two and a half years uh, when we will have JSF2.2. Uh, this is the roadmap of uh, JSF2.2. Uh, it's announced like uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh, also mentioned in Java 1 last week. So Java E7, JSF was supposed to, JSF 2.2 was supposed to be released like a couple of months before, but there were some delays to add more features. 
So um, now it's aligned with Java E7. So I think Java E7 also delayed a couple of months. So uh, hopefully in spring 2013, we will have Java E7 and JS 2.0 and a bunch of other JS as well. Um, the thing is, JSF follows the spec by minus one. So it will still run on Java E6 containers. So remember that JSF 2.0 can run on server 2.5. So now it will support 3.0 because it depends on file upload and things like that. So JSF always uh, follows the Java E spec uh, with one less number. So these are the big features of JSF 2.2. Um, as I mentioned, the HTML5 is very popular, everyone is talking about it, and uh, JSF is trying to catch up. And the problem was, for example, we have H input text, right? How will you add HTML5 features like placeholder to H input text? You cannot, unless you use prime faces or extension library. So there has to be some um, customized, flexible rendering mechanism so that JSF can uh, get these, allow these, any type of attribute and push it to the client side. So, um, whether it's HTML6, if there are new attributes, JSF do not need to care about all these attributes and it will just render them as pass through. The second big feature is faces flows. Um, any Spring Webflow users here? Um, ADF, task flows, or my face coding? So, only spin the <laughs> So, um, faces flows, again, there's no innovation. It just takes these ideas from Webflow and ADF task flows and makes them, uh, puts them under uh, official package named Javax faces flow. So, again, the same features. Uh, actually, the Spring Webflow guys and ADF guys are also an expert group, so they contributed the specification. And this one is still changing, so it's not final. Things can move around as well. Um, there's some um, security protection as well on for GET requests. Um, facelets now, uh, JSF was loading resources with resource handler and the pages with facelet handlers. Now they are unified in resource handler. Um, one complaint was there's no file upload in JSF. Now it's here non-Ajax and Ajax. Right now, only the non-Ajax part is implemented because it's simpler. Uh, I think it will take some time for the implementation guys to come up with an Ajax implementation. Uh, but PrimeFace has one. Uh, Multi-templating, uh, it's like uh, Joomla or in Drupal and other con uh, content management library and it brings those ideas to JSF so that you can you can have galleries of uh, JSF templates, you can pick your template for your page and since there's a contract, uh, your application will can switch uh, the pages dynamically on the fly. So let's start with the rendering of HTML5 attributes. Um, this is how JSF works. We have the component tree here. And this views, facelets view, XHTML views, create the component tree and in the rendered view, we get HTML stuff most of the time, right? So this is how the rendering works. The component has uh, specific attributes like values, IDs, and name, but they are limited. What if we would like to have some placeholder attribute that is not available in... I mean, for prime faces, it's easy. We can just add these attributes, but JSF implementations cannot do it. And so there are a couple of ways to add placeholder. Unfortunately, expert group <laughs> used the P. <laughs> I said no, <laughs> don't do this, but they use it. But it's a short name, so you can change it to PT, but in dogs and books, it will be P, which is good actually, so, so that people can realize, can just make the uh, thought that it's a prime face feature, but uh, it's a faceless feature. Uh, I mean, faces was used mostly for tags and namespaces, but we can also use uh, this faces which the, All of these stuff are not possible with JSP, so once we JSF started using facelets, we had uh, 
pass through attributes. So pass through attributes are not in the contract of the component. So there is no get placeholder attribute in the H input text, but there is a new contract called get pass through attributes. So whatever you push, uh, this these two were the first um, uh, propositions proposal, but they are ugly, right? I mean, new tag, but this one is much more simpler. So luckily. Um, most of the time I think people will use this signature, but there are also other ways in case you have like more than one attribute. So any type of like pattern attributes, uh, the type attributes and things like that. Uh, whenever JSF sees this P, uh, it will just put them in the pass through attributes and it's up to the component author. Now in prime faces we have to you know make sure that we render pass through attributes as well. So, um, the good thing is that if HTML6 comes up, you can just use that HTML6 nice attribute on that input tag and it will be in the final rendered markup. There's also another uh, nice feature. So if you have designers in your, uh, web designers in your team and they don't know what H input text is, they can just create the JSF components using this signature. This was also available using JSF CID, but you have to define the H input text. But now JSF just makes things more flexible. So you, there's a new namespace. Uh, it's, it's the shortcut is JSF. So this one will be an H input text actually for page author, but for web designer, it's an input text. So you need to tell the web designer to use JSF value instead of the regular value. But for example, this type color, type date, HTML5 stuff will also be available. So when, whenever JSF sees this markup, if there is no, if it was like this, it will just treat it as a regular HTML markup. But now, whenever JSF sees the syntax, it will just treat it as an H input text. So it will create an H input text. All right. Same as for date. So, for example, in PrimeFest we have color picker and date picker. But now you can just use HTML5 native uh, color and date tags as well with this. You know, JSF2 input text doesn't have even type. So, because of you now uh, the release of HTML5 specification and JSF. So, um, another interesting thing is the HTML5 has key again. And whenever JSF defines some dynamic things like this, there is no key again component in JSF. So, JSF will fall back to a customized render and it will still treat this as a component and things like that. So, um, this feature is like mostly for designers, so if you are just using your own, uh, if, if you are the page author and not the web designer, you can just stick to H input text or P input text, whatever. But this is, uh, I think, it's, this is a real nice feature um, that will just make the rendering of JSF flexible. So, faces flows, um, this is still in progress, uh, even what Ed Burns showed last week, uh, there were some slide code, but there's no implementation. So faces flow, the problem is that uh, whenever in an application we need a flow, uh, this flow, whether it spans multiple pages and things like that, it usually ties, ties to a single set of UI uh, pages, right? And there's, there's a problem of limited scopes. We cannot use session scope, right, because of it will be shared among uh, tabs or windows. So imagine that you're you're working on a customer or you are trying to get two flight tickets on two different tabs. Conversation scope of CDI uh, helps on that, but again, uh, the, uh, the problem, with, it's just a good beginning on CDI conversation scope, but flows are much more, much more than that. The ability to you know, encapsulate flows, redistributing, redistributing them, creating reusable flows are the aim of faces flows which are available in Spring Web Flow or other projects. So the name is faces flow. Uh, the ideas are derived from ADF task flows, Spring Web Flow and Apache My Face coding. Uh, you will see that if you work with Spring Web Flow it's the same thing you will see that there's no learning curve. It's just a couple of things, uh, new XML syntax. So what what is a flow? Um, you can think of a faces flow as uh, as a Java method. 
you can just call it from anywhere in your application and you will start the flow. You, you can just, whenever you open a page, you can start the flow. Whenever you call a Java method, you can start the flow and things like that. So, a flow has a single entry point. So, imagine you are booking to a hotel. So, the first page is a single entry point. Or whenever you log in, you can start a flow as well. Uh, the idea of a flow is that you give some inputs and get output packs. So you get your you know, credit card number and things and you get the outputs back, right? So no this no no typo it's outputs. <laughs> so faces flow scope um, in Spring Maple it was flow scope, in ADF it was page flow scope, now it's faces flow scope. So it's like flow storage, so even the input components can write and read from the flow. Um, there's an add flow scope CD annotation as well, so if you annotate the beam with add flow scope, that beam can um, you know, participate in a flow, and you need to give the flow ID as well. So, what's there's some very important thing here, JSF depends on CDI, right? This is the first time JSF depends on CDI. This also gives the message that deprecate uh, at manage bean uh, stuff in JSF. Also, there's another place uh, JSF depends on CDI, which is at view scope. Anyone used CDI and complained that there's no view scope in, CD, uh, in CDI? So everyone's fine? Okay. Yeah, the problem with CDI is that you don't you don't have any view scope. You have to some you have to use some extensions to get view scope. JSF also brings view scope to CDI with JSF 2.2, uh, which you know hints that JSF will uh, leverage CDI from now on and deprecate the old stuff at manage bean, which belongs to Java Spaces bean stuff. So um, faces flows. Um, do not think of these like pages, because in a regular JS on web application, we navigate from one page to another. That's a flow. But faces flows are more, much more than that. You can navigate from between the flows. So you, if you have a sub flow, you can just call that sub flow and proceed with that sub flow and get back some results as well. So JSF has a flow. Entity class, sorry, class called inside the package Java Spaces flow, and this flow uh, brings several um, properties like start node ID, where where, where is this uh, starting entry point, and inputs and outputs and things like that. There's also flow handler. Everything in JSF has a handler, so there's a flow handler where if you, for example, if you call get current flow. It will give you, uh, in the bean, it will give you what the flow is right now. And there's also a client window feature I will talk about. JSF 2.2 gives every tab a window as an ID, uh, which is utilized in flows. Uh, there are some different node types that can participate in a flow. For example, view, which is like a regular JSF page, method call, any method call that will call. Uh, switch is like, for example, to have some conditional things in the flow. If there's an error, go to that you know, state. If there's another uh, success, go to that mode and things like that. Also, uh, you can call subflows. There can be nested flows. Um, and subflows can return values from, from themselves to the parent calling flow. So the important thing is how do we build this thing? There are two alternatives right now. This one's implemented, XML. So if you are familiar with that flow, it's the same thing, XML, you have an XML, separate XML file. Uh, the first implementation was putting that XML inside F metadata, but the page became like a huge, so it's now separate. Uh, there's also a Java builder in plan, so in case you don't want to use XML, because JSM is you know, trying to stay away from XML from now on, and uh, the alternative would be uh, the Java-based uh, flow builder. So you can have a create a flow, define the states, all using programmatically using Java. And the cool thing is that if you have a flow in your application, if you put them under MetaNF, uh, with the under flows folder, uh, with the appropriate flow XML and your pages, uh, you can distribute these flow 
uh, in different pages. So if you have uh, a flow of containing five pages, like say, booking, you can just create it once and run it anywhere. So any questions about flows? Um, unfortunately, there's no demo. Uh, but I think um, Ed did a demo. Uh, Java 1 slides, there was a separate faces flows session in Java 1. So if you check out Java 1 website, slides and media are there. So uh, Ed and, uh, and uh, a colleague from his colleague from Oracle talk about, because this topic is not easy to cover in like in 10 minutes. Um, so if you have time, just check out Java 1 website. There's the presentation and recording there. One hour flow, uh, faces flows. Not flaws. So, uh, protection on pages. Um, there were some requests from the community that to protect, to make JSF more secure. Um, so, cross site request forges like um, your users are working on your application, but uh, the browsers, it's, uh, somebody tricks the browser to send some additional requests. They were not meant to be, to get, so that uh, in response, um, the you know the hacker tries to understand what user's credit card is. So um, this was al already covered in JSF because in JSF view state is encrypted. Um, so you know JSF is a stateful framework, so it sends the state every time in each request. This one on the, when the client side stays sa saving is on, this one was encrypted. So, but this one get you can just call a JSF page. But there's no encryption there. there. That could be a problem. So uh, JSF introduces protected views uh, configuration and using some special uh, request headers and some tokens uh, that JSF can understand. JSF will make sure that this get request is a valid request. So JSF improves the security in 2.2 as well. Um, file upload is. Uh, a new feature of JSF 2.2, notice that it requires Servlet 3.0 because of that multi-part config annotation. Uh, our faces Servlet is fine and annotated with uh, at multi-part config. Um, so if you use H input file, just regular input text, it will just render a browser input type file uh, markup. And if you submit the form, you will get the file back. Um, this non-Ajax is implemented right now. Uh, the Ajax part is uh, again, as I mentioned, uh, will be uh, available. Um, so, another thing is that that AJAX file upload will use HTML5 file APIs, right? Which is another dependency on uh, HTML5. So, uh, JSF 2.0 introduced facelets to resolve XHTML pages templating and resource handler to load JavaScript and CSS. Now, JSC 2.0 unifies these two concepts as well. Um, so, for example, you can write uh, a facelets resolver, uh, resolver and load your templates from jar files as well. And the last big ticket feature is multi-templating. Uh, this is what we call Joomla for Java E. So, um, this is also uh, contributed by expert group member Lamine Ba. Um, so it goes beyond facelets, so it's not just template, it's the whole site, everything, like admin panels, uh, new forms, list forms, and things like that. And it's in a jar file where you uh, add this jar file to your class path and your application, tell your application to use that uh, multi-template. So it's, again, the name says it's not just one template, it's a lot of templates. And there has to be a contract, right? section, menu bar, content. JSF 2.0 defines these uh, contract and templates in jar files uses these uh, uh, contract and you can just create. Uh, I'm just hoping that there will be a sites like JSF you know, galleries that you people can log in and download the multi, you know, like you download the Joomla template, you download a uh, JSF template for your application. There will be some commercial offerings from the year as well, so like in Joomla. So medium-sized features um, for CDI users, uh, there will be a view scope 
it's already done. It's in trunk and snapshot. Uh, you can just get the 2.2 and um, use Etive scope from Javax. Sorry, Javax faces. Um, there, th another nice thing is uh, important thing here to note is that the Javax faces bean stuff will probably be deprecated if you download the Java docs. There's a notice that just don't use this and use CDI. So it's also uh, another coupling with CDI. Uh, injectable JSF artifacts, for example, until now we can inject EJBs to the managed beans. Um, but right from now on, any type of artifact, we can inject uh, other Java E artifacts. Like most of the time for converters and validators, we need some you know, EJB, right? Instead of doing a lookup, we can just in have it injected in our converters, which is much more clean. JSF gives every tab and um, window a window ID. Uh, so this is quite tough actually because this should be done by the browser instead of the server. So JSF tries to do its best and tries to identify different requests and tries to give them different IDs by passing that ID, so on and so forth. View actions. Uh, anyone use seeing view action? Yeah, it's the same. Um, so whenever you send a, of open a page with a request URL parameter, uh, for example, item ID, you, and you load that you and you want to display that item, right? In JSF 2.0, that was a problem. We had the view params, which can map the request parameters to the view params, but only there was a pre-render listener so that you can just load the item with that ID. But in every pre-render, in every rendering, that will be triggered. Now with view actions, you can just say, I have this view action inside the metadata, and whenever my page is loaded for the first time, just go and execute this method. And it will be executed only once, but you can configure it uh, in other ways as well. Uh, programmatic ways of creating compose compounds. I know most of the people are creating uh, compounds using facelets, but um, JSF also provides you a programmatic way, like instead of H input text, you can just create the input text instance on the server side, but you can also now do it for com your composite compounds as well. Clear input values is something I've been working on, and the problem is um, if the Validation fails on an input component, it keeps that value in the state, and you're stuck. Uh, I, I don't know why it's so late in JSF 2.2, nobody sees it. Uh, this is something I'm trying to get in JSF 2.2. I've written a proposal um, and worked with uh, other expert groups last week. Hopefully, it will be in as well. There will be some, in prime phases, we have fixed that, but now I'm trying to standardize it. Standardize it. Ajax queue control, um, F Ajax will get a delay attribute so that, for example, if you type, if you have an F Ajax on a key app, if you type quite fast, you will have end up with 10 requests. Now with the delay attribute, uh, the only day, uh, the last one will be executed. And also, you will have more control on the queue. Um, small size attributes. Uh, by default, everything will be HTML5 doc type. JSA will render it for you. Um, this is quite nice. Uh, if you are writing a component in JSF2, uh, there is no need to write a JSFP tag, uh, you know, tag file, a TLD, and so on. But so it, in JSF2 point, it was great to simplify it. But we also still we have to define a faceted taglet with the tag. Right now in JSF2.0, there is also uh, an annotation for that. So you can just write one class. And that class can define the facelet tag name, facelet tag name, namespace, component type, so you don't need to even create the XML file anymore. Uh, better type checking for composites. I have been burnt by this many times. Uh, it's good to hear that this is coming up. So if you are passing some value to the composite component and trying to check the uh, value expressions type, it was always returning the overland object. Now it's returned the proper type. Uh, these are small things that most of the time uh, the page author does not need to care about flash factory and flash system events. Uh, then standard parameters between Mohor and my faces, you know, JSF has two implementations and they do the same thing with different parameters, or Apache my faces and Comsan faces. And view state ID uh, 
The hidden variable in JSF Java Express view state is repeated in many times if you have multiple forms, which is invalid HTML. Now JSF fixes that as well. So, um, finally, the resources. If you'd like to monitor what's going on in JSF 2.2, uh, this is the spec. Uh, also, the issue tracker is here, so you can see what issues, what changes will be in JSF 2.2. And this is the implementation where you can download JAR and start playing with it. Uh, right now, in the current implementation, we have uh, basic faces flows are implemented and uh, HTML5 stuff as well for rendering, but not the other stuff. Uh, this, this is the mailing list of expert group and this is the users list. Um, I don't think that there has to be. Them. I wish there was just one list that everyone can, and there is no separation of expert and non-expert. But uh, this is how, it, how things work. So uh, whenever someone posts here, it will also be copied here. Um, so in case you'd like to get involved with JSF, uh, this is the way. So uh, that was my part on JSF 2.2. Any uh, questions? questions? Yeah. yeah. Well, I have one actually. Um, uh, the problem with JSF is the stateful architecture. So, yeah. you know, it doesn't scale very well when it's under load. Anything done about that? You know, anything that you can not not in the not in the core. Uh, I mean, it was done in JSF two with partial state saving. So JSF only states only what has changed. If the component style attribute changes on the, on the same page, JSF just keeps the delta values instead of all page. It was terrible in JSF 1, where the whole component tree and all the state was kept. But now with JSF 2, uh, only what has changed, uh, the component tree is just built every time. And uh, for state, only the deltas are changed. But in 2.2, I'm not aware of a uh, thing that uh, work on stateless JSF. But there's a project called Stateless JSF. That's interesting. I never tried it, but uh, the author claims that there's been just Magnificent, magnificent uh, differences between stateful and stateless JSF. Uh, that's worth checking out, and it's just one jar. It's like maybe it will be the facelets of JSF three. Maybe there will be a setting in JSF. But again, the problem is that it's designed with this and stateful architecture, and trying to make it stateless can be problematic in some pages. But uh, in stateless JSF project, you can tell these projects should be stateless request scope and it just works uh, but nothing core uh, actually frankly I'd like to see JSF status as well yep. uh, but yes, yes. Yes. just to you know no state on